know, 299 new stories in that month related to Nottingham Forest. Earth, Bell and Fisk. Fisk, obviously, the guys that we're going to feature. Um, obviously, these guys have got their own stories. And there's a great story about Tom Peacock. He played for Forest for years, quite a prolific goal scorer. There's loads of articles on how great he was and stuff like that. We released him just before war. He didn't leave the club, but basically he was available for transfer. People went off to war, he joined the RAF, survived, came back, played for Forest during the war as like a guest, and then played for Forest after the war as well. Joe Mercer, because his dad went on to manage England in 1950. So William Fisk, William only joined us in August 1914. We paid a considerable sum to Blackpool, which was his hometown. He never got a chance to play for Forest because later that month, August 1914, war was declared on various countries. William Fisk was a reservist, so he was one of the first people that got called up, um, along with two other Forest players. There was a, there was a chap called Bell and there was a chap called Firth. Now, William Fisk um, went off, spent time, he was part of the Norfolk Regiment, spent time in, in Norwich um, before heading off um, to fight in Europe. Um, he did come back, he had spells of leave as all soldiers did, and he did come back and play for Forrest um, five times. And notably, two of those appearances were against Derby. Sadly, um, in 1918, William Fisk died. He'd been promoted to sergeant. He was last seen in the Battle of the Aisne, going over the top, and he was never seen again. His body was never found, but it is recorded he's killed in action at the Battle of the Aisne in France. George Hazard, so George Alfred Hazard. Um, George is, in many ways, the inspiration for, for a lot of what we're doing. Reason being, he never actually played for Forest First Team. He was a Nottingham lad, born in Radford. Again, like William Fisk, he was an army reservist. Played for the Forest Reserves, but he was only a young lad. He, um, he went off to fight in World War I, and he died at the age of just 23 in 1915. His career never got the chance to take off. Joe Mercer. Now, people know Joe Mercer, as the England manager, Joe Mercer. Junior was the England manager. Joe Mercer, who played for Forest, was his father. Um, he was a centre half, played for Forest for many years, leading up to the war, and again, by all records, was a, was a, was a long-standing, impressive servant for the club. He went off and he enlisted. He, he joined what was known as the Footballers Battalion, and that was a, a regiment down South Essex or Kent, and basically established footballers at the time went and joined this single battalion and fought together. But Joe Mercer was part of that Footballers Battalion. He, um, unlike the other two chaps that were featuring as part of the World War I contingent, Joe Mercer did survive. Toward the end of the war, was, was victim to quite a nasty gas attack in the trenches, and he played havoc with his health, sadly, and in 1927, he died as a direct result, really, of, of the gas attack from nine, ten years previous. Percy Ashton, he was a goalkeeper, had played for Forest through much of the 1930s. He was born in 1909, so he was, in terms of a footballer, he, he, was, he was quite old by the time the war was getting on, he, he was going into his 30s. He joined Forest in 1930. We don't have a huge amount of information on his war record, but we know he went out and fought crucially did survive. He never played for Forest again, sadly. He ended up playing for a team in Grantham, Grantham Road Town. He played there at a much lower level after the war, so effectively the war did end his career. And uh, he died in 1985. The final, but no means last, person that we included on the banner was what we now know as a centre forward, Tom Peacock. So Tom Peacock, again like um, Percy Ashton, played for Forest through a lot of the 30s. He was a fairly prolific goal scorer, big, popular, player for Forest, a lot of information on Peacock, scoring goals, he did miss a little bit of a time during the late 30s I believe through injury, he actually got put on the transfer list by Forest towards the end of the 1930s just before war broke out, but the war it changed a lot of plans, he ended up going off to fight and he joined the RAF, served there and did come back uh, like some of the other guys, did come back on leave and play for Forest still through the war when he was, when he was away from the action, again did survive. Now Tom Peacock is just an example of kind of someone who gave a lot to Forest obviously gave even more for, for the war effort, carried on, played for Forest after the war as well. Oliver Worrell, 17th Battalion, Shield Foresters. 
Thomas Birtles, 2nd Battalion, Sherwood Foresters, 11896, died 1917. It's like me getting caught up to serve my country now. It's scary to think that we were in them times back in the day and all that who was had to get called up and, and go and serve your countries must be very daunting and I couldn't imagine me or being a young lad at 22 getting called up to serve for your country and, and leave leave football and, and your job behind. Go and serve would be, be horrific and something that you have to do, um, something that I would do as a, as a player, um, someone who I can obviously relate to, it must be, must be terrifying. Makes you feel very humble indeed. Um... You know, if we, we wouldn't be sat here sit, uh, talking to you now if it hadn't been for those you know, soldiers who gave their lives in both wars. And they should be remembered again and again and again. And I find it staggering that uh, it's not in the school curriculum that, uh, you know, that happened. You know, those two world wars should be in every school. Every child should learn about it and realise how lucky they are you know, for the sacrifice that all those people gave for us to be sat in the sunshine at the city grounds. My dad tells me he was born in 1930, so he was nine when the war stopped in the Second World War, but his, his brother was much older, and he went to war, and he tells me, you know, the time he came back, and, you know, he was lucky enough to survive it. So, um, you know, those stories still stick in your mind, and again, you realise how lucky you are. So, uh, I'm Theo Christian Norrish. Uh, I've been in the Royal Navy, been in the Navy 12 years. Uh, I'm currently working at RF Maru on the uh, new F-35 Lightning Jets. So a little bit different, a bit of a lost sailor. Yeah, enjoy myself there. My dad was a massive Forest fan. Uh, he got me into it from a young age, probably about three or four years old. I remember coming down here for the first time when I was about six years old. I think Tim Flowers were playing in golf with Blackburn and in one of his funky kits. Uh, and just been a mega fan ever since, really. I just think it's a really important time of year uh, that we take a few moments out from busy lives and things like that to just remember and respect what the gents did and ladies did for us uh, more than years ago and in uh, past wars, even going back to the 80s, such as the Falklands. Their sort of um, what they give up for us to live our lives today is massive, so uh, I just think it's really important to take that time out. Uh, my name's Joe Pond. Uh, it's been Quite a few years since my service, uh, so in 2-3 Engineer Regiment, 5 one Pirate Squadron. Uh, toured Afghan once, um, long days, long nights, but really just a taste of all the soldiers uh, of days gone by have gone through, uh, which is who we remember today. I think marking Remembrance Day at Football Grounds is is brilliant, it's fitting, but doing it at the city ground is something else. It's, it's special and I'm proud to be a part of it today. Kev Stacey uh, served in the British Army for seven, uh, just under 17 years uh, as a Royal Engineer. So I've been Forest fan ever since I was born. Uh, when we won a cup in 79, I actually sat inside the cup when they took me for a tour around the, uh, around the uh, local area. And my dad and my granddad put me inside the cup, so I sat inside the European Cup and then season ticket holder for the last seven years. A lot of friends to remember, Viz Lines, uh, especially was one of my uh, young lads. I buried him a couple of years ago. So uh, I'm here today for him, really, and his family. Corporal Lady Thornhill, I'm at RF Coningsby on 41 Squadron, aircraft engineer. Uh, supported them obviously from a young lad. My family are from Beeston. Uh, yeah, love the club. I was uh, posted away obviously for nine years, so they rarely got to come down here and it's nice to be close to home now. I think it's just important that, um, not just to remember the guys that obviously lost their lives during the wars, but the guys who have lost their lives since and continue to lose their lives to this day. My name is uh, Captain Neil Wagstaff and I'm just coming to the end of a 40 year career in the Royal Navy. Uh, throughout that 40-year uh, career and long before I've been a Forest supporter. So, as I say, I've supported Forest well before I joined the Royal Navy in 1980. Uh, seen them you know, throughout Europe, home and away, and uh, wherever I've been deployed, I've followed Forest. Sometimes that stopped me getting to many, many games, but it's not stopped me following Forest. Wherever I've been uh, in, in the world, uh, always following Forest. And uh, the rivalry you get between other clubs, people wearing their shirts all around the world is fantastic. Obviously wearing a forest shirt and then uh, uh, doing that. So it has, it has been throughout my 40 year of career, I've always supported the forest. Remembrance is hugely important for all service personnel. It's a hugely important uh, weekend. And I think it's lovely that um, we can come together as a, as a football and actually share that moment of remembrance because we all uh, have colleagues, unfortunately, that we've lost. 
and I'm particularly thinking about Lieutenant Colonel Darren Chapman, who was unfortunately uh, shot down uh, in his helicopter in Basra and killed with six of his colleagues. I served with Darren uh, in, in Norway, so I'll be thinking about Darren this weekend.